Good morning, Boy Scouts. Today we are going to learn how to navigate using a compass. That sounds like fun. Is it difficult? Not really. As long as you do everything perfectly. So pay attention. First, let's review last week's lesson. Can you tell me the cardinal headings on a compass, Rose? North, east, south, and west. I always remember, never eat slimy worms. I'm a little disturbed that if the worms were dry and crusty, you'd be stuffing your face with them. But let's move on. How many total degrees of heading are on a compass? 360. Excellent. Who invented the first compass? The ancient Chinese first discovered the magnetic properties of lodestone and used it for navigation around the 10th century. That's right. The navigational lodestone evolved into the magnetic compass we use today. Can you name any other type of compass? Well, there's the dry magnetic compass, the liquid-filled map compass, the thumb compass, the lensatic compass, the gimbal-mounted mariner's compass, the radio compass, the gyro compass, the solid-state electronic compass. That should be enough to get us started. Now, describe the features of the map compass. The map compass has a clear plastic base which is marked with scale markings in a direction of travel arrow. It is a clear, movable disc with orienting lines and degrees of azimuth. It also has a magnetic, north-pointing needle in the liquid-filled capsule. Sounds like you were paying attention last week. Now, do you know how a compass can help you? It can help determine where you are, and where you need to go. How can a compass help determine where you are? By taking sightings of objects and plotting them on a map, you can determine your position through triangulation. That's right. And how can a compass tell you where to go? By placing the direction of travel arrow parallel to your course on a map, and turning the orienting lines to the north, you determine your course in degrees. Then, turn the compass until the magnetic needle and the orienting lines point to north, and walk in the direction indicated by the direction of travel arrow. Indeed. How long should you walk in that direction? I'm not sure. Well, if you know how fast you are walking, or how long your steps are, you can walk for a certain period of time, or a number of steps, and compute how far you've traveled. This is called dead reckoning. Why is it called dead reckoning? Because most of the people who have tried it are dead. Are you still paying attention? Yes. Good. Now, we're about to learn that the world is not a perfect place. Unfortunately, the magnetic North Pole is not located with the true North Pole. The true North Pole is located at the top of the world. It is marked by a red and white pole in Santa's front yard. The magnetic North Pole, however, is located in northern Canada. Why is the magnetic North Pole in Canada? Probably to take advantage of the free health care. Is free health care really that good? Based on the fact that the magnetic North Pole is moving from Canada towards Russia, I'd say you are not missing much. Anyway, if you are on the East Coast, Magnetic North is West of True North. On the West Coast, Magnetic North is East of True North. The difference is called Magnetic Variation. But my Scout Handbook says it is called Declination. That's because the person who wrote it is not a pilot. If he was, he would know it is called Variation. How can I find out what the Magnetic Variation is? You can find out the Magnetic Variation by reading it on a map. If it is an old map, you will have to calculate the variation based on the drift rate, which is also written on the map. For example, in Lexington Park, Maryland in 2012, the magnetic variation is 11 degrees west. What do I do with magnetic variation? Well, if you know your true course from a map, and add magnetic variation, you get your magnetic course. That is the direction you walk if you are using a magnetic compass. Of course, if magnetic variation was east instead of west, you would have to subtract, not add it. This is getting confusing. Wait, it gets much worse. A compass also has a type of error called deviation, caused by the presence of metal objects in the vicinity. That is why an airplane compass is calibrated, and there is a calibration card for the pilot. So I need to carry a calibration card when I'm hiking? I wouldn't recommend it. But when you use your compass, you can eliminate deviation by keeping your compass away from large metal objects, like your rifle or chainsaw. 
I don't think the Boy Scouts allow me to carry a rifle or chainsaw while hiking. I don't remember anything about that from my online training. Are there any more questions? My GPS says we are at 38.291 degrees north, 76.425 degrees west. That's not where you plotted our position using the compass and map. Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? More likely, the Chinese have shot down half of the satellites, causing extreme errors in your GPS. That is a good reason to become proficient with a magnetic compass. I think it's time for me to get some practice. I'm going for a hike. Don't forget your essential equipment. Good luck with the dead reckoning.